Uh, uh, Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 504. It's Monday, April 29th, 2013, 10 p.m. Pacific Time. Internet talk radio for your imagination. Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Today we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster, plus the finale of my end to an interview with Portland, Oregon, Sally Ford and the sound outside. Mike's Daily Podcast. The American Society of Plastic Surgeons released their statistics today, and I was surprised. Mike's Daily Podcast. For the seventh year in a row, breast augmentation was the most popular form of cosmetic surgery. And women spent $61 million to get brachioplasty, which is a surgery to get nicer looking arms. Because of Michelle Obama, possibly, you can get those from working on a farm. Because you have to lift stuff a lot to make sure your arms look strong. Mike's Daily Podcast. But people take the shorter way of doing it and go under the knife, which is ridiculous and expensive. And the longer Mike's you do it, the more daily you start to look like a podcast Frankenstein monster. Yeah! Or look like a star of a new VH1 reality TV show. Oh, look who just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How y'all doing? Hey, does a disgruntled fiddle player tell you what? What? Whatever people want to do, you know, in the plastic surgery thing, I think they should do that thing that they want to do. Because what I would like to say is, it's your thing. Do what you want to do. Thank you, Isley Brothers. You're welcome. Who are the Isley Brothers? You need to listen to different music other than country music. Jason Aldean's divorcing his wife because he got caught cheating on her. That's what country music's all about, Mike. Okay, another great reason to listen to it. Look, let's just walk in. Hello there, Mike. I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Brewmaster, I see you've invited a lot of people to hang out around your root beer vat. Yeah, I got the idea of going to the local breweries and people that make a beer. I noticed that they have put in tables by their beer vats. And I thought, why can't I do that with my earth beer vats? So you, you're basically opening up a bar. Yeah. Do you have a permit for that? What's that? Uh, so, like, what are you doing exactly with the whole thing? I'm inviting people to come and sit by my earth beer vat. And we have special nights. Like tonight... Time to take off your top night. Time to take off your top night? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, boo. Okay, that's an issue. Oh, don't take your top off, Brewmaster. Oh, my gosh. Three nipples. Mac, earlier, the Brewmaster asked me to take my top off. What did you do? I politely declined by punching him in the face. Wonderful. Yeah. Benita, the offer still stands. Oh, stands. Mark, I gotta tell you, this is really disturbing. Yeah, it is kind of, huh? Yeah, because it reminds me of our first date. Oh, this grown fiddle player, I love you. I love you, Benita. Rest in peace, George Jones. Bye, all bye. He stopped loving her today. It's an awesome time. Well, if you're excited about the Brewmaster's new specially themed nights and turning the last place on earth into a brew house, tap room, gastro pub, microbrewery, whatever hipster word you'd like to use. Those aren't hipster words. They've been around a long time. But sometimes the hipsters grab words and abscond with them. Did they take abscond too? Crap. You can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. And we read your comments on the section, emails for me mail. Tell me what you think about all the plastic surgery going on. Come to California and see some lips that don't exist in nature normally. We also have the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. That is where you can go to find our link in iTunes, and you can listen to the show in iTunes and subscribe to us there and get all the new shows sent directly to your iTunes, what is it called, page, account? Yeah, that's what it is. 
Uh, also, if you go to iTunes, you can rank this show and comment on the show. More people find out about us if you do that. Also, check out at mikesdailypodcast.com where to find us in Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Yelp. And also, we have the blog, and we have the podcast picture of the day, and we have the deal of the day from Amazon. So you can buy stuff for real cheap. And if you buy something through the special window we have at mikesdailypodcast.com, which you can only find online, by the way, and not on your smartphone, uh, the smartphone version of mikesdailypodcast.com is much more stripped down. Then if you pay for something through that window, the Amazon window, we get some money. We haven't seen any yet, but... We're keeping our fingers crossed. And to be quite honest, that's kind of painful. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. Into an interview. We are speaking with Sally Ford from Sally Ford and the Sound Outside. And her new album is called Untamed Beast. It came out in February. Find out more at SallyFord.com. Sally, what's the songwriting process like for you? Uh, I guess it's always different. Um, most of the time... These days, I like to come up with cool guitar parts and then just sort of figure out melodies and lyrics um, and then bring the song to the band. And then we all kind of shape it and see if there's anything that we've changed at all. And yeah, I think we work really well together at this point, and we know um, that it's sometimes it just takes time to play through the songs and figure out what sounds good, so... And how did you get into performing music? Um, <clears throat> well, when I first moved to Portland, yeah, I had done it a little bit, like at open mics. And then, uh, yeah, I just decided maybe I should try it because it seems like a good art form because you can speak honestly about your emotions and just vent about things. But yeah, it's not like inappropriate to do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it and I think with other kinds of art it's like uh, it's harder to do that and I think I, I'm lucky because I also have a background in music just playing it as a kid and what what instruments were you playing then? Uh, violin and singing and guitar and piano yeah a lot wow. of a few things mostly violin though I guess what I did the most and they asked you in that Eleven article about if you're ever going to play violin on any of your songs. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I don't love violin. I think it's a cool instrument, but it takes a lot of practice. And I'd rather, like, rock out on the guitar. Yeah. With crazy effects and make it sound insane out of this world. I agree. And I have to tell you, you played open mics. This is something I've learned about because I've played some open mics. Get there early. Because <laughs> if you put your name yeah. on the on the list and you're like down at number 30 or something, you're never going to play. And you're just going to sit through all these performers. Some of them good, some of them awful. And then, you know, oh, we're out of time. It's So that's what I've learned. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And now you can play whenever. You don't have to put your name on a list. You can just go, hey, we're Sally Ford and the sound outside, damn it, and we're playing. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I like the more organized setting up the show kind of thing. That's more my thing. Open mic was a good way to start, but it's definitely a little bit in like intimidating. And people don't know who you are, so you just kind of have to go for it. Yeah. It is kind of scary. <laughs> David Letterman is scary. <laughs> yeah. Tell me yeah, about we were little, Tell me lucky. about that. Yeah, we were really lucky to do that and I think uh that just they seem to like to book all sorts of bands anything from like really famous to just starting out and we were lucky to get to be part of that and uh yeah, I mean, it was kind of a funny experience because uh, I think they're used to working with bands that have a bunch of crew and stuff, so our load-in, like, to bring our gear there was, like, 6 a.m., even though, like, I don't think we could even do anything after that. We just brought in all our stuff and then had to wait, like, till the afternoon 
Wow. The sound check. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool show, I think. Uh, hopefully we'll get to do more stuff like that. What's there to do from 6 a.m. to noon hanging out at the CBS studios in New York? Or was it was at the uh, L, that's the Ed Sullivan Theater, right? Yeah. Oh, I think we splurged and uh, uh, got a hotel room right by there so that we could t- go back and take a nap. Because <laughs> oh. we knew that it was going to be an early thing. Smart. Yeah. What an experience. I know, yeah, it feels surreal when it happens. Do you meet David during the show or like? Yeah, I mean, he'll come up to you. It's like he doesn't get there until it's filming. In the afternoon, so we just sometime. met him when after we played our song. He just comes over if he likes the band or something. He'll come and say hi usually. Huh? Shake your hand. The, the... That's it, and then he's and then you're gone. You're off. That's. I mean, maybe if you're like really famous, he wants to come and hang out afterwards, but. <laughs> so that didn't happen for us. Were his hands soft? Oh, I haven't. I don't even remember it. It's probably so <laughs> freezing cold in there. I can't remember. <laughs> they That's keep one the... other thing is that he likes it really freezing cold. Wow. That's interesting. <laughs> uh, and d- did you get like a tremendous response from that being on a show? Uh, somewhat. I mean, I think like it still has an effect. Like, people randomly show up to our shows and say that they saw us on there, and that's how they discovered us. And that's cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess sometimes people think we're, like, really famous because of it, and it's not really the case. I mean, it happened, and it's cool, but uh, we still have to play shows where only, like, 50 people show up or 100 people sometimes, if they're lucky. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well. We're still a baby band. <laughs> baby band. It's not like all of a sudden overnight, just because we play on David Letterman, that we're like selling out a thousand capacity venues. <laughs> you know. But I think people just assume that. Right. Because that's what you hear, like the Johnny Carson documentary that they had last year. They were like all these comedians saying, oh, man, if you play Johnny Carson, everybody found out you were like. God after that <laughs> nice but uh, it's a different world television's a different landscape now there's so many shows and then there's so much stuff on the internet and there's so many things distracting people and but it's good that you guys got to be on there and d- uh, one last question about it did you meet Paul Schaefer yes he actually did hang out with us for a wh- little while What's he like? He, uh, yeah, he seems cool. Yeah, he just, uh, uh, it was kind of funny how, yeah, yeah, you know, he played with us on that song. Did you see that? No. Oh, he did. Oh, that, does he, he does that a lot, doesn't he? He gets uh, and plays. Yeah. I think sometimes if the fans want him to play with them, it happens. I think what happened is, uh, forget someone made a joke about it but not thinking it would actually happen and then uh, this woman that works for us asked him basically if he would and he said yeah oh. <laughs> and the next thing we know they, someone says oh so Paul is good, said he's going to come and practice with you guys and we're like what <laughs> wow it was really cool yeah and he hung out for a minute did he, like, need sound, uh, or I mean, uh, uh, you know, notes? Did he ha- need music sheets, or did he just uh, pick Not up? really. I mean, he's so good at that stuff. I think he kind of just listened and followed us and seemed like he he- needed to hear it a few times, and we kind of just told him what the chords were, and he was good to go. I think he's amazing that way. He just one of, He's one of those people that, you know, can play by the sounds that he hears in his ear. It's amazing. Yeah. I heard, awesome. I heard an interview with the Gin Blossoms like 20 years ago. You know when they were popular, and uh-huh. and they were just starting to get popular. And they were on a local radio station. I was living down in Ventura, and there was a station I could hear out of Santa Barbara, and they were on there. And they had just been on David Letterman, 
and the